It was a harsh and cold winter in Wycote Bay, a small and rather fairly little-known part of Canada, that not many people know about. Wycote Bay is a remote community-driven seafront. It had its history goes back to Christopher Columbus's time. However, Wycote Bay has since been nearly a forgotten place. This was all but for the people who lived there. There once was a young woman called Crystal Summers. She was 25 years old, she had long blonde hair and blue eyes. She had a son who was exactly like her. He was called Kyle. Named after her own father. Not after the father who had so cruelly left her to bring up her son. It had been a very hard time bringing up her son. Because of this Crystal moved to her great-great-grandmother's house for a while. This was before she was able to move into a house of her own in Wycote Bay. Crystal had stayed with her great-great-grandmother Christine, until the day she had become quite old and was near to dying. Crystal looked at her great-great-grandmother with sad eyes as she sat down on her mother's old bed. Do not look so sad my dear, there is more to life than death itself, and death is only but a transition from one life to the next life. Remarked Christine in a frail cracked age-old voice. Crystal began to weep, it was strange that her great, great-grandmother had such an unusual view on death. How can you say such things, Christine? Because I truly know what comes after death. Don't be silly great, great-grandmama, no one knows that. Oh, but I do sweetie, it does not matter that you believe me or not. Oh, I don't mean to sound disrespectful great, great-grandmama. Oh it is okay honey, I do not mind. Whilst I have the strength, I am going to make my will out to you. I fully intend to leave everything to you including my old silver mirror. What? You cannot leave that to me Christine. That is such a very valuable piece and it belongs to you. It has been in the family generations for years and years, centuries even. I know and that is why I am giving the mirror to you, as you are family. But. Don't argue with me honey, please. Just accept the gift as it is meant to be, my dying gift to you. Sadly those were the very last words to Crystal. She later moved out of central Canada for good and moved to Wycote Bay. She knew of the place, as Christine has always told Crystal great and fantastic stories about the bay. Crystal had found a detached house in the bay that had three bedrooms. Two main bedrooms. And the other bedroom was an attic that was an unused extension of the house. The house was no. 13 Fay Lane. Wycote Bay was a community-driven seaside landmark. Kyle had long hair, as Crystal wanted her son to have it that way. In fact Crystal really wanted to have a baby girl. She fought hard and longed to resist the urge to put her son in the prettiest most feminine girly clothes that she could buy. Girls are much prettier and the clothes that girls wear are truly pretty. Crystal had put her great great-grandmother's silver framed mirror up in the attic, as there was no other place to put the mirror. Sadly it became long forgotten about until one day, Kyle had found it. The silver framed mirror was made out of pure silver. It was a very old mirror and it looked like something out of a fairy tale book, it was gothic in design. Kyle was a typical boy who was curious about everything. He wanted to explore the house and Crystal was happy to let her son explore the house. It helped, as she had other things to do and she could not get anyone to look after her son, while she was busy. Kyle went up into the attic. It was surprisingly empty, apart from the silver mirror, which was dead centre of the attic. Cobwebs had obviously had gathered all around the mirror. Kyle's blue eyes widened as he saw it there. The mirror looked really spooky all covered in cobwebs and he loved spooky things. Even so, Kyle timidly approached the silver mirror as he began to slowly brush away at the cobwebs. Kyle looked nervous, as though removing the cobwebs was somehow taking away the mysteriousness and the spookiness of the mirror. The cobwebs peeled away and turned to dust in Kyle's hands. Kyle looked at his reflection in the mirror. To his shock and disbelief, there was a girl inside of the mirror, yet, she moved as he moved. Who are you? Kyle asked, as his own lips moved to ask the question. To Kyle's shock, the girl moved her lips too and her voice came right from the mirror itself. 
as she also said at the same time. Who are you? What? replied Kyle in shock. What? replied the girl in the mirror in equal shock. Kyle was at a loss as to what to say next. He jumped up and down. The girl in the mirror also jumped up and down too. Just then the girl in the mirror curtsied. To Kyle's shock he held in the same place an imaginary hem of a dress and also curtsied. Kyle, then did the unthinkable. He walked toward the mirror. His hand reached out, as so did the girl in the mirror, her hand reached out too. Why was she there? How did the girl get into that mirror? As Kyle walked toward the mirror, a hand reached right through the glass of the mirror and it touched Kyle's hand. Kyle felt cold all over. Before he knew what was happening, he was pulled toward and through the glass of the mirror. Kyle stepped through, into what? All that I can tell you is this. Kyle, was not the same. As he looked back toward the mirror, he saw himself in the reflection of the mirror wearing a pretty frilly pink dress. White frilly pink lace trimmed socks. Pink Mary Janes on his little feet. And in his long blonde hair. There was two pink silk ribbons. Kyle's hair was tied into two pigtails. He lifted up the skirt of his dress. Curious as to what he was wearing underneath. To his surprise, he had on a pair of pretty pink plastic pants. Somehow Kyle knew that he was also wearing a nappy underneath. All of a sudden Kyle was also aware that he was somehow physically a baby girl. She knew that her name was not Kyle, it was Kessie. Crystal was happy to have such a cute little girl. It was something Crystal had always wanted. But who was the girl in the mirror? Perhaps that is a mystery. That shall never be truly unraveled.